every so often, some will ask me to do, I guess, what you'd call, like, a system overview video. Basically, going over the general software that I run. And I think the reason why some people ask for this is because it's kind of hard to work out what I actually use from my videos. Because in my videos, a lot of the time, I'm constantly swapping stuff out. The way that I normally go about it is... If I'm trying something out for a video, I will play with it for like a day, a couple of hours, really depending on how long the software actually needs. And then if I don't like the software, I'll go back to what I normally use. So that software is what we're going to be looking at today. Now, the first thing is probably my distro. Now, I don't know how some people still don't realize this, but... I'm running Arch Linux, and I've been running Arch Linux basically since I started doing Linux videos on this channel. The reason for that is because I don't really think about the fact that I'm running Arch most of the time. The only time I think about it is when I'm doing a video specifically on like the AUR or some very, very Arch specific thing, or when there's a dependency in the Ubuntu repos that's named differently in the Arch repos. That's really the only time it actually matters. Now... I might try out something different, but I don't really have any burning desire to get rid of System D and run something like Artix. So if I do try something different, it's probably going to be some form of BSD or maybe something interesting like NixOS. Now, as for my window manager, I'm not using BSPWM anymore. I'm using Awesome WM. I've been using it for a couple of weeks at this point, and I am a really big fan of it. Some people seem to think that it was actually DWM. No, it's definitely awesome. I like the way you configure awesome. This isn't to say that I won't go back and do some videos on BSPWM, but I feel like when you configure awesome, it's a bit more certain what's actually going to happen. Whereas BSPWM, because the tree is a really complex structure, it's a bit easier to break stuff and have weird behavior occur. As for my shell, I'm still using ZSH. The main reason why I originally switched was because of the tab completion. Because in ZSH, instead of having to go and like tab through this entire list, I can go and move around this list with my Vim keys. Or you could, do, you know, do it with your arrow keys if you wanted to. But this is just a much easier way to move around. Now... I might eventually try fish out at some point. The only concern I have with fish is having to learn a whole new shell syntax, whereas ZSH, I guess it's probably fair to call it like a superset of bash. Now, someone's probably going to be like, oh, here's this one situation where bash syntax is slightly different from ZSH syntax, but for most things, it's fair to call it a superset. My main terminal is Alacrity because Alacrity is lightning fast. It supports true color. It supports uberzug. It has a really easy way to configure it. When you modify the config file, it just automatically reloads it. And that's pretty much anything I could ever want from a terminal. Now, I do still have some other terminals installed. So I have ST installed and I also have URXVT installed as well. Now, I typically don't use these other terminals. The reason why I have them, one is for testing in videos, just in case, you know, I try an application, it has some weird problems inside of Alacrity. I want to make sure those aren't specifically Alacrity problems. And if they replicate in other terminals, then I can assume it's just a problem with the application. Also, if I happen to, you know, break my Alacrity config or it breaks between an update, having these here just means that I have a terminal that I know works. Now, for my web browser, you probably know that I mainly use Brave. The reason why I use Brave is one, the built-in, like, ad blocker and tracking blocker, and the second reason is for the free internet money. That's pretty much the only reason I use Brave. I don't really have any, like, burning desire to keep using it. The second the free internet money disappears, that's the second I stop using Brave. I do have some other browsers installed as well, so I also have Chromium and I have Firefox. The same reason is why I have multiple terminals installed. If I need to test stuff out, like let's say for Fire Envim, for example, I want to make sure that it works in Chromium and in Firefox. It just makes sense to have them both installed. Could I be using, you know, ungoogled Chromium and LibreWolf? Absolutely, I could be doing that. However, because I have these browsers installed pretty much just for testing, I want to have the ones that most people are actually using. So when I stop using Brave, I will probably mainly use something like ungoogled Chromium, but for the purpose of testing, it makes sense to have these ones installed. In my videos, when I need a file manager, I'm mainly using LF. I like LF. LF is basically Ranger written in Go, and you have to configure everything from the ground up. Would I recommend it over Ranger? 
if you like to configure stuff, absolutely. If you just want a terminal file manager that works though, try out Ranger, try out VIFM, try out Midnight Commander, anything like that is fine. This is more like if you just want to have a project to work on pretty much. Now, I do actually use another file manager as well. So I also have PC Man FM installed. The reason why I have this one installed as well is because in a lot of cases, it's just easier to use a GUI file manager, especially when you're trying to interact with other GUI applications. Like let's say I want to drag some files into my video editor. Now, there are ways I can do that from LF, but it's also just more convenient if I just select a bunch of files here and then drag them over. When it comes to recording my videos, I know there are much lighter solutions out there, but I just use OBS because OBS is just convenient. The main reason why I use OBS is because of layouts. So I could do something like say, disable this camera right here and then swap it over to this version right here. And I could have this happen on just two button clicks or I could switch my camera over to this position right here or this position, or I could go a full screen cam and it just all works seamlessly and has transitions working. And there's nothing I really have to go and mess around with. Once you actually work out how OBS actually works, it's really easy to work with. Now, I know I could, you know, make some hacky scripts to do it with FFmpeg or Simple Screen Recorder, but this is just convenient and eliminates all of those problems. My video editor is really the only thing that actually lines up with my videos. Right now, I'm actually constantly switching between things. Every two weeks, I'm trying out something new. And right now, my main thing is Olive. It's kind of alpha software. It's a little crashy sometimes, but I'm really liking it over something like Caden Live. And I think out of the ones I've tried so far, Olive is actually my favorite. But as of the time this goes onto YouTube, I think I'm going to be trying something like Open Shot Out. I'm not entirely sure. I decided while I'm editing the video on the video editor. For watching videos, I have a really boring choice. It's just MPV with a couple of scripts because why would you bother running anything else? MPV does everything you need a media player to actually do. I can do my thumbnails with a little script. That's basically all I need. Now, as for my music player, I'm running NCMPCPP with MPD in the background. Now, I don't really look at NCMPCPP that often. Mainly what I do is I'll queue up a playlist and then I'll use my media keys with this application closed. And what I do on my streams now is actually have a script using MPC that queues up a playlist I want to play on stream. So I don't have to go and like fiddle around with this interface. I can just have something in D menu that says, hey, what playlist do you actually want to play? And then it just automatically does it. For interacting with Pulse Audio, I use Pulse Mixer because I really, really don't want to touch that CLI tool. And this does basically everything I could need it to do. Pretty much what I need is to be able to do things like change my levels for my output devices, for my input devices. And if I need to do something like, say, move a application to a different device, it's very easy to go and do that. And like my media player choice, my image viewer choice is basically as equally boring. So right now I'm running SXIV. However, I don't really use most of what SXIV can actually do. I pretty much just use it as like a glorified window to print an image. That's why I like things like Ucollage because if I could just completely get rid of SXIV, I would go and do that. Now, I know someone who's like a big fan of SXIV will probably say, oh, there's so much you can do with it, like scripting and all this other stuff. I don't use any of that. So for me, I don't really consider it that much of an advantage. With image editing, there's just one application that outclasses everything else. And that application is GIMP. I don't really know why you would bother with anything else. Now, I do know that it has a bit of a weird interface, especially if you know Photoshop. Luckily for me though, I'm incompetent with Photoshop, so I don't really have that hurdle to go over. I didn't really know any image editing before I tried out GIMP, so I'm sort of learning everything the GIMP way from the ground up. So pretty much what I use GIMP for is for making thumbnails and for making my channel art, and that's pretty much all I use it for. Now, I know there are some pretty good web-based solutions out there that might actually be worth trying out. I might have to look into them, but for now, I'm happy with what GIMP can actually do. And even though some things can be a bit fiddly, I've sort of automated the stuff that I want to use and anything else I learn as I need to go. 
Now, I know that Awesome has its own built-in launcher, but I've been using D-Menu since I was on i3. I have a lot of scripts that are dependent on D-Menu, so I thought, okay, I'm just going to continue using it. Now, I might try out the Awesome launcher at some point, but D-Menu does basically everything I could ever want. Now, I have considered trying out Rofi at some point, but... I look at Rofi the way that I look at Emacs. I don't think that Rofi is really just a launcher. You can do so much more with it. Like how Emacs isn't just a text editor. Yes, you can use it for that, but there's so much else you can do with it as well. In the past, when I needed to read a PDF, I would use the Thora, but what I realized is that I don't really download that many PDFs. Most of the time, I'll just view it in my web browser, and because I'm viewing most of them in my web browser anyway, the ones I download, I might as well just open up in my web browser anyway, and that's pretty much what I do at this point. Now, for some reason, it's loading up Chromium, not Brave, but it's basically the same reader in either browser. Now, I know there are plenty of advantages of using Zathura, like the fact that it's not going to eat up all your RAM, and it's really easy to configure, but... If I'm just going to use it once every couple of months, I think it's just easier to use my web browser. You can talk about whether this should be functionality built into a web browser if you want, but the browsers I have installed do have that functionality, so I might as well just take advantage of it. I'm not the one who typically moderates the Matrix side of my chat, but when I do need to do anything with Matrix, it's going to be with Element, because... Element is the one that gets the most feature development because it's the main client, has the most people working on it, it's actually developed by the Matrix team, and it's the most Discord-like. Now, because it is Discord-like, that does end up causing a bit more confusion than it needs to really do, but I still like it the way it is, and once you sort of learn the pitfalls that exist, it's a perfectly fine application to work with. Now, I have considered trying out some of the terminal-based Matrix clients. The problem with those, though, is that a lot of images get shared in modern chats. And having to open up an external application just to view an image is sort of inconvenient. And I think it sort of breaks the experience. So I typically prefer using GUI applications for things like this, and Matrix is no exception. Speaking of GUI applications, when I want to check my emails, it's going to be done with Thunderbird. Now, I don't like the fact that emails have gone way past just plain text. That's all you need for an email. I don't know why we're sending full HTML documents over email now. But because that's the case and that's what everyone's doing and they're embedding images and all this other stuff into the email, I need something that can actually interpret those emails correctly and a GUI application is the easiest way to go and do that. And it also helps that I like the Thunderbird interface. Now, one of the problems I do have with Thunderbird is it does way, way too much. So email, fine, makes sense. Calendar, Okay, probably doesn't need to be in an email client, but if I'm checking my emails, I'm probably checking my schedule for the day as well. That's also fine. An address book, that's cool. You need addresses to actually send emails to people. That's okay. But why is there chat, file link, feeds, and news group? All of these don't really need to be here. I would like a version of Thunderbird that just has all of this stripped out. Now, I know there are much lighter weight email clients I probably could go with, and maybe I should try one of those out, but I would just like a version of Thunderbird where these are missing. Now, speaking of feeds, if I want to look at my RSS feeds, I'm not doing that in Thunderbird. I'm actually doing that over in Newsboat. So Newsboat is a terminal-based RSS reader, and you've probably seen it in a couple of the live streams I've done. Because most of the RSS feeds I look at are mainly just full of text, there's no reason not to be using a terminal application. Now, there are some exceptions, like say this post right here does have an image, but typically when there's an image there, the image really isn't that useful. The biggest reason why I use Newsboat specifically is because I can do query feeds. So query feeds let me do things like, say, this big feed right here, which has merged all of these feeds together, all of the, uh, the Linux and command line related feeds, and then stripped out the things I don't care about. So say on Unix porn, the only thing I actually care about there is anything tagged with OC, because the rest of it is just people saying, hey, look, my desktop looks good, and I don't care about your desktop. Even though I'm not going to be switching to it, I do have a video on SFeed coming very soon, so keep your eyes open for that one. There's probably something I missed out in this video, but I think that covers most of what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. There might be some other things that get used like once every week or once every month, but 
I think that pretty much covers everything I really care about. If I did miss anything and you have any questions to ask, just go and ask in the comment section down below. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. I think it's uh, that hockey. Yes, it is. <laughs> Forgot what my hotkeys was. I was changing stuff around. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Monza, Will, Brennan, Chica, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, D, uh, St the Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support, I'll them links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got a podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.